Hello, everybody. Uh, I know it's the last one, so I want to tell you my story, our story in Colombia. Um, and I don't know nothing about technology. All of you are the audience that are experts in technology. I try to be expert in business and to tell you our story of transformation, of change, and how I, as a CEO of an insurance company in Colombia, uh, I am there to transform our company without getting crazy. It's not easy, believe me, because all of you have a lot of ideas. The world is changing very fast. But we, when we are sitting in a company that is established for more than 40 years, making almost the same business for years and years, you cannot, do, the, you cannot make decisions very easy. If you have to, to stop on a dime or uh, to accelerate very fast, those type of decisions are not easy. And when you recommend anything or recommendations, introduce into our head and say, wow, each recommendation is not easy to follow. For that reason, uh, when we start our transformation, we decide to listen to the experts. And we decide to try to learn, try to unlearn what to do. And for sure, all those experts say, you are going to fail. You are going to fail. You are there to fail. But of course, it's not easy to fail. It's not easy to make decisions. And as uh, too many companies, we don't have a lot of budget to fail. We don't have a lot of budget to innovate. So we decide to start this story uh, with the experts. And if you listen to the experts, all the experts are going to tell you some steps to follow any transformation. And if, if I am in this moment recommending any business people, how are the steps to follow any transformation? I can tell you that this is the summary of the first five steps that you have to follow. First, you have to invest in culture. You have to invest in your people and put in the mind the change, the word change, the word transforming. They open the minds of everybody. It's not easy. This is one of the worst things to do uh, in a biggest company, in a small company. To change the way you do the things is the worst and most difficult thing to introduce any transformation or any innovation. So the first thing is invest in culture. Second, you have to take time to make an assessment, to make a diagnosis of your process, of your technology, how many applications you have, what is your specific problem, what do you have in your hands. So if you take time to understand your company, you are going to be ready for the third step. The third step is to be focused. Focus on what you really want. Do you want efficiencies? Do you want innovation? Do you want to be an exponential organization, or do you want to accelerate your presence in your market? You need to understand what you want, what is your biggest problem, and how to solve it. Uh, with your problem in your hands, you are ready for the next one. You have to select your partners. You have to select the tools that you are going to use for this transformation. At least you have to select the, the first tools that, you can, that are different of your traditional legacy systems and that, that are going to change uh, your company. And of course, your partners, because as an insurance company or as a company, the scope is not to be a technology company. My scope is to sell insurance. So I need to find somebody that knows about technology, but they really match with our culture and help me with the next step. And the next step is the most difficult step, getting to execute. Sometimes a lot of analysis give you a lot of ideas, but you don't know when or how to start executing. And when you start executing, the only thing that you know is that you again and again have to invest in culture, in make again a new diagnosis, again to define your scope, to find new partners, and this is like a cycle that never ends. This is the recommendation of the experts. But being honest, this is not what happened in our company. So I want to tell you our true story of how we transform or how we are transforming our company into the company for the future. Because when you have all those steps, you can say, I feel comfortable, I have my team ready, I have my culture, and ready to transform. But as a CEO, and believe me, each CEO, even for a smaller or biggest company, when they are seated, listening to you, saying, about Netflix, Uber, Airbnb, 
or artificial intelligence or whatever that you listen in all the market, in all this type of conference, inside you, you feel fear, you feel panic. And I want to tell you that is, that panic is true. So you feel that you have to destroy your company trying to transform your company. So this is what happened inside your mind and inside the mind of all business people when you listen to this. If you are a conservative leader, it's not easy to make that decision to destroy your company, to start again. So this is our story. My name is Marta Lucia Pava, and as you mentioned, I am a medical doctor. I am the president or the CEO of an insurance company that has been in Colombia for more than 43 years. I have 300-something employees. We have a portfolio of around $145 million, and we offer multi-product, multi-channel solutions, insurance solutions in different geographies inside Colombia. The path to, to of all these 43 years to come here and saying to you that we are transforming the company, we are growing, we have different options, is not an easy path. I don't know who can say that has an easy path, but the path is, is full of obstacles, full, full of obstacles that give you the possibility to learn and the possibility to transform. Saying those obstacles in this moment is, is almost impossible, but I want to summarize one, uh, one of them. We used to belong uh, to a multinational insurance company very recognized in the market, AIG. AIG, American International Group, have been in, in, have presence in more than 130 countries. Probably all of you know about AIG as an insurance company. And AIG, as all multinationals company, they want to have a very good footprint uh, and very good presence in all geographies. And to put that presence in all geographies, usually multinational companies says, you have to repeat my model of my headquarters. You have, everybody has to have the same technology, the same culture, the same scope, the same purpose. And for us, small countries, it's not easy to follow the same technology that AIG has in New York. The headquarters of AIG is in New York. So, the challenge for a multinational company is really understand the necessity or the needs in the market in each geography. Because the needs in emerging markets or the needs in Latin America are very different, very different if you see the needs that you found in London or in Japan or in Asia Pacific or, or in any other place. So for multinational, that is a challenge. And the most time any CEO of a multinational company is Spend is explaining headquarters, no, in this geography I don't do in this way, in this market the, the needs are different, please let me follow with this idea, and the bureaucracy to make decisions is not easy to follow. Because in those companies, multinational companies, the structure is like silos. The silo of product, the silo of finance, the silo of operations. And each silo is from headquarters, even if the headquarters is in Munich, in London, in Zurich, or in New York, up uh, to our country, to Bogota, Colombia. So operations have decisions made in New York that impacts our operations in Colombia. But to speak operations in Colombia with finance in Colombia have to move up to New York and then make decisions. So it is very difficult to manage a company where silos exist. So work as a team, Innovating this moment is almost impossible. Uh, if you know, innovation is not only technology. Innovation is when you put a very good talent with a very good problem, and together the talent and the problem becomes with ideas to solve the solution. But if you, know, if you don't have autonomy to solve anything or to make any decision, what do you do with the very good talent or what do you do with the very big problem? So that was our moment. This is the moment that almost all multinationals suffer trying to make some innovation internally in each geography. So we didn't have common goals. The goals of the silo of operation was a different goal of the silo of finance. 
And as a company, only people seated in Colombia. We didn't have the same goal. And with that phase, we learned that we were followers. We were ready to have the rules and being honest, only following the rules, our headquarters was happy. It doesn't matter the result of the company, it doesn't matter the company was losing money or was creating a lot of money because we were just following rules. And we learned that very good leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. And my recommendation is that if you have in your company any people that is just following rules, you have a problem. Because anybody wants to follow rules every time. Follow rules is not innovation. Follow rules are the things that the uh, artificial intelligence and all of these new technologies can do. And with those technologies, people and human beings can be more humans. And we are pretty convinced that humans, with the space of create, create and motivate and inspire others, can be better human beings. So, uh, the picture three years ago in our company was like this. In this moment, I have 300 employees. In that moment, I used to have more than 500 employees. Now we are more profitable, we are more efficient. But the, to repeat the model of New York includes to repeat a lot of headcounts that we didn't want, following rules. We used to have, in terms of technology, more than 140 applications. And believe it or not, with those applications, we just have one interconnectivity. So those applications used to act as a silos. So I used to have not only my employees or our employees as a silo, but also the applications. So the data and the decision didn't speak each other to have any solution. And the cherry of the pie, of course, is that with that model, we were losing money. With each dollar that we won, we spent one dollar and a half. And we spent without any reasonable purpose. Because the purpose was the purpose of operations, the purpose of finance, or the purpose of product, but not the purpose of a very good result in Colombia. So we learned to live in an environment of ambiguity. Uh, leading a company with ambiguity was a challenge, but it's the way we have to learn to live. Not only because this type of, of solution, it's because ambiguity is the world where we live. The world is changing a lot. There is a lot of challenges. And if you cannot control everything in your company, even that you have to lead and to inspire your team with ambiguity. So we decide in the moment that we have to work with people, with culture. If you have to, your people motivated, you are not going to lose talent. But at the same time, what happened is that we decide in Colombia, people used to be happy, we used to be very optimistic, very positive, and we tried to, to see the glass full, the half glass full and not empty. And we were trying to do that. It wasn't easy, but we were trying to do that. But in that moment, AIG decided to have their scope in more mature economies. And they decided to sold a lot of their countries, a lot of their presence worldwide. They sold around 22 countries, and in Latin America, they sold five countries, and they sold those five countries. And for us, trying to be very optimistic, we were looking for good news. And the good news became very fast. Became very fast because in the past, the scenario couldn't be worse. We were losing money, we were silos, wasn't easy to have a profitable company, and couldn't be worse. So anything can happen, and we decide that anything is going to be a good news. but. This was a very, very good news. The company that bought our operations was Fairfax. Fairfax is a Canadian financial company, financial holding company, that invests into many things. They invest in BlackBerry, they invest in Toys R Us, like an opportunistic investment, they invest in meals, they, they invest into many things. They also invest in insurance and reinsurance company. They never sell those reinsurance and insurance company. So we start becoming part of the Fairfax family. They sell and they buy everything, but they don't sell a never, never insurance and reinsurance company. And the first good news is nobody's going to sell us again. The second good news was the meaning of Fairfax. Fairfax is the summary of fair and friendly acquisition. 
So when we listen, fair and friendly, we say, wow, this is inspirational. We want that. We like that fair and friendly way to do the things. So let's see what happened. And what happened, uh, there happened a lot of things. But the owner of Fairfax is Prem Watsa. Prem Watsa is a, a person that lives in Toronto. He's from India. He interviewed me, and I want to tell you this because this is very, very important for business guys. Because when they interviewed me and I present that company losing money, I was trying to say, hey, Prem, there is a lot of opportunities in Colombia. We know our business, we know how to do it, and we want to be profitable. And at the end of, those, of that conversation, he says, okay, Marta, I can see the opportunities. Tell me any question that you have from me. And I say, okay, I have one question. Prem, what is the driver of your decision? And this magical word and that answer changed my mind and inspired me to continue doing things because he says, it's just about people. And when he said, it's just about people, I say, wow, somebody believe in me, believe in us, believe in the opportunities that we have. And he says, I can see your face, and I notice that you don't, you don't believe in me. And I say, no, of course, I believe in you. But it's not easy to listen a leader that believes in a small country that are losing money. And he says, why here in Toronto, and I repeat myself, here in New York, here in Munich, I don't know more about your country than you. So I'm hiring talent, but the decisions are going, are going to make in your country with your ownership. So you are going to be the owner of your destiny. And when any leader is the owner of the destiny, he's going to make very good decisions. And I say, wow. If we can build our own destiny, we have a lot of opportunities in our hands because we have experience, we have talent, and now we are going to have autonomy. And without autonomy, innovation and creation of anything is impossible. But with autonomy, we can do anything what we can do with our small budget, but we can do. So in that way, we, get, we start seeing a lot of opportunities. The first opportunity is the model. They believe in a decentralized model that is the opposite of all multinational com the companies that ha try to have the same model worldwide. But they say, no, you don't have to follow my brand, you don't have to follow my rules. And I say, what is, the, what is your rules? And they say, I don't have rules. I have guiding principles. I have values, integrity, honesty, having fun at work, result-oriented, no egos, no confrontational style, and please give me profit. And that's it. It sounds easy, but was a change in the mind, in my mind and in the mind of all my leaders. There is no rules. Wow. What can I do without rules? I have to reinvent my company. I have to reinvent the business that I know how to do and see how I can accelerate this transformation. Because everybody wants to transform, but if you have to to take permission of the bureaucracy chain uh, from Bogota to Miami, Miami to New York, explaining everybody in a decision, is, it wasn't easy. So the first opportunity was the decentralized model. The second opportunity was the talent. In Colombia, we have been recognized to be very good at the writings and the writers. And the writers are the people that put the price of any risk to sell insurance. So we know how to do our business and we are passion. We were investing in culture, we were investing in manage the change, understanding the change, communicating the change, leading with ambiguity. So we felt that we were ready for the, for the change. And the other opportunity was systems. For years and years and years, we, we used to have the same system. And we can only ask any transformation for the same system. Uh, web services for the same system, interconnectivity with the same system. And that system was ready to explode. It doesn't work, but we cannot hire anything different. So we see the opportunity to transform our system or, or our IT uh, technology. So for us, that was another opportunity. And the final opportunity is when we sit together and we define, we need one word, only one word, that make us different. We already have Fairfax, fair and friendly. 
happy. We are happy with fair and being very unfriendly. But in insurance, what is the difference that challenge you to be different and is not easy to, to follow? And we define the word agile. So in that moment, we said, in our brand, we want to offer to everybody agile solutions. We want to be agile and in insurance without investing in technology, doing the same thing for years and years. Being agile is a challenge. It's a challenge and requir requires a lot of help of all of you guys that knows about technology. So we decide this, and with all of these words, we say, we are ready. We are ready, but big companies can change the talent, can change the tools, can change everything, but cannot change the big purpose that we have, uh, or the big purpose that makes you wake up in the morning, inspiring to do something. If you are a big company, or if you are a small company, you have to have a reason to wake up each morning to work, because not always work is, not always work is, is fun. Work is hard, but if you have a big purpose, you can follow that purpose and you can put all your team together to follow that purpose. And as insurance company, we sit together with our leaders ready for the change to define what is the purpose of an insurance company. An insurance company is boring sometimes, a wording of a policy of your auto or your damage of your home is not easy, it's not fun to read, so the inspirational is not the wording. The inspirational purpose was to, to ensure that you can still, you can continue dreaming. You can continue dreaming because we are going to protect your dreams and your projects. And in a country, Colombia is not a mature economy, it's a very beautiful country with happy people, but it is still trying to grow, have a, an economy that is, is, is getting profitable and profitable step by step, but we want that all Colombians continue dreaming because we are going to protect their dreams in a catastrophe or in a bad moment or momentum or in an accident, and we can allow them continue dreaming. So with that purpose, and trying to be agile, fair, and friendly, we felt that we were ready our transformation. But the challenge was, wasn't easy. Because the challenge was when you have an airplane and you cannot land it. And your team have to be ready to rebuild that plane and see what happens when you rebuild one plane. Our challenge was to change all the plane, and the clients cannot understand that we were changing. The clients have to understand that we are going to be more agile. So we are changing people inside, we are changing technology, we are changing the brand, we are changing everything inside. And you have to ensure that your team is ready for that. And your team is prepared to have the confidence that the pilot is doing something good and the people that is painting the, the airplane is doing, is doing something good. So that is a different way to work. And if you ask all of you, you can say, it's not easy to move big companies into a change because nobody has the confidence that the other one is making good decisions. But in our moment, when AIG decides to sell us, the transformation wasn't an option, it was a mandatory. So we decide to start our transformation. Because uh, yes or yes, we cannot still with the same brand and with the same people and with the same pro uh, process and, and application, etc. So we uh, start investing, and as I mentioned in the beginning of my conference, I, we start investing in culture. First in culture, second in people, third in culture. Always people and culture have to change. How to invest in culture? Top down. You have to change the mindset of your leaders. So we hire coaches for each one of our leaders. You cannot be a good leader if you cannot work inside yourself to be the best version of yourself. So we decide to invest in our leaders to open the mind and to manage the change. And we hire a lot of conference and a lot of moments 
sharing together how to communicate the change, how to lead in the change, how to suffer the change and understand the change, how to retain people. And at the end, after the change management, we start working as a team. How to break silos, how to have confidence between each other, how to understand that people that is very emotional with a person that is very analytic, how to understand and how to drive a company with different type of talents. And at the end, we also give all of our leaders the confidence to lead because when you are the owner of your destiny, you have to make decisions. And the, the fault is not the fault of the headquarters. You are not following rules. You are making decisions. And it's not easy. Make decisions is not easy. So when you have everything together, moving to execute and make decisions, it's not as easy as the paper can say, let's make decisions. And of course, yes or yes, any change includes efficiencies. We need to make efficiencies. In people, it's not easy to make efficiencies in people, but you have to select the team that is going to share with you the future. You, are going, you have to make efficiencies in technology. You cannot waste money in technology. We don't have money to waste in too many uh, software applications. All of you offer a lot of things with licenses, without licenses, uh, attaching with our model of our business, and it means a lot of million dollars. And we also have to make efficiencies in process, re-understand the processes, re-understand how we manage our business. Because at the end, what really matters for any owner of the company is profitability. A company without profitability is not a company that has a very good future. So putting together, transform a company, having profitability, investing in culture is, is a challenge. It's fun, but it's a challenge. And in that moment, we say, OK, this is the best momentum. We have very good talent. We have a very good problem. We are ready to innovate. And let's see what happened. Because in all of those steps, we were looking like uh, inside our, our company. We, in that moment, we didn't have space or time to see what happened uh, outside of our company or what is happening in the world. So we decided to, to be ready to see what is happening outside. After that, with our big propose, uh, purpose of uh, ensure the dreams of everybody, we noticed first internally that there was a lot of discussions, comfortable and friendly discussion, but there was discussion. Because you have women and men and millennials and baby boomers, and you have a lot of different uh, people that it, it's not easy to make decisions, how to move forward. But at the end, we learn and probably you listen to Steve Jobs speaking about this, that when you put all the stones together in a can with different opinions and you have put in this movement in the can, at the end, we polish each other to be better because we don't want just a stone writing. We want all the company, all clients trying to be much better. So with that, all of these words became very fast to our head and we say, as I mentioned, yes, we are ready. Let's see what happened outside. Now we have incorporating some words in our mind, teamwork, culture, clients, change. OK, ready. The, the pocket full of these words, we are ready. And we felt in this way only for a while. Because when we look outside of, to see what is happening outside, all of these words became like a, like a noise that give us like crazy. You are losing time, you don't know what is uh, artificial intelligence, you don't know nothing about data mining or robots or, or all the things that you know. You are experts in that. In that. But we see, what, what can I do with those words? I don't know what to do. I don't have money, we are losing money, we are ready for change, but how can I manage, manage those type of words? And we felt, and if you ask any CEO, they felt like we are losing the train. If you are not in that train, you are losing the future because company of this century are ready to lose money in the next century. You have to transform. And when you start transforming and transforming yourself, you see that you are always feeling that you are going to lose the train. And when you feel that you are going to lose the train, again, you go for experts and see, help me. I don't want to lose the train. I know about insurance, you know about IT, so I need experts. So we decide to go shopping. 
And when you go shopping, it's not easy to go shopping when you don't know nothing about IT, when you don't know nothing about partners, because all of you partners give us a lot, a lot of noise in our heads. You are doing bad, you are going to lose money if you don't buy my system, if you don't buy my consultant expertise of too many million dollars, and you start listening and listening and listening, and it's not easy to go shopping in terms of IT. And when we went trying to, to go shopping in terms of IT, in terms of partners, we decide that we want a partner that really share our inspirational momentum, that share and understand our panic, our immature baby steps in terms of IT, but understand our inspirations. We really want to be a customer-centric operation. And I want to tell you about our two main partners uh, that are sharing with us how we are going to transform our company. The first partner is very interesting partner, is in the middle of the mountains of, of Colombia. This partner was inspired in art, and that, that partner, Sistemas y Computadores, was born with the intention to put art in all communities and all geographies for free. And they start developing artificial intelligence, logarithms, to have data ingestion and convert the data into useful data and repeat that data to offer data for free for anybody, books, paints, and too many things. And with that, they understand that they, they can replicate the same model to digitalize any company. And the second project that they made for, was trying to make the most boring process that is paying taxes. So they try to, to, put the, to, to make the paying taxes process in a very good process. And now they have a house in Bucaramanga, it's a small city in Colombia, a house where you can pay taxes, you just take three or seven minutes paying taxes because they develop the interconnectivity, the efficiencies, the data ingestion. They made too many things to make easy paying taxes. But in that house, you can see art, you can take for free a coffee, a water, you can look for books, and everything is free. The only thing that you have to do is paying taxes and enjoy the art. And with that, partner, we learn that if paying taxes could be easy and agile, selling insurance, quoting insurance, solving or paying claims in insurance can be agile. So they inspire us to start entering into the uh, data storing, um, intelligence for processes and interconnectivity and make that one data introducing any data or anything inside of our company with the same in the same moment, moment, you can do with this any agile, uh, any agile process. So we start creating our e-desk, and any, <coughs> sorry, any any um, entrance into our company is going to be in the same path. Digitalize that that data and convert that data in useful data, and start making interconnectivities. So. With Sistemas y Computadores, we select the first part of our transformation. And then we select the second, the second partner. And with this partner, a magical word came to our minds because they, they help us to understand that if we want to be a customer-centric operation, it is impossible if you are not a data-centric company with more than 100 applications and the data included in those 100 uh, more than 100 applications, it is impossible to make decisions. It is impossible because you have duplicated the data, duplicated the process, and they help us understand that we have to move all of our data into a unique database. And then with that data in the same place, cleaning the data, understanding the data, the data can start thinking. We can st start introducing artificial intelligence, learning machine, or, and in that moment, all those words that make noise in our head are taking more and more and more uh, reason in our business. And we say, yes, we can. We can transform a company. We can be ready for the next century. We can transform into a more agile, predictive company. Because for insurance company, 
the data is everything. The data to calculate any risk, to calculate an earthquake, to calculate a fire, or all the risks that we are facing is about data. So with these two partners, we said we have to create confident or relationships and our new architecture. And this is our new architecture. I'm going to follow uh, fast with this architecture, but we change all the way we hire software, we hire technology, we hire any consultant, and we say, with just these two partners, we are going to jump into the water and create our new future. Without listening a lot of things, just with these two partners, let's create something great. And we understood another learning. A lot of analysis make paralysis. And in some way, and in some moment, you have to jump into the water and interrupt the analysis, interrupt comparisons, interrupt your fear, and jump into the water and enjoy the path of what is going to happen in the future. With that, we start creating our Sili project. Sili, in Africa, is the, name of, is the name of an elephant. And elephants in Africa have to reinvent themselves because the tusks are very, very expensive. And everybody was hunted elephants and killing elephants to use the, the tusk. And they reinvent themselves and they start burning without tusk. And we understand that we have to reinvent ourselves internally because we want to survive. And, and as an elephant project, there is a lot of data. It's a very, very difficult project, but it's the only way to survive. And Sili includes the letters of our partners. S from Stratio, Y from Sistemas y Computadores, L, L, our legacy system, because that is another good news. Any CEO wants, really wants to change the core system. Each time we think to change the core system is a big headache. And change the core system while you have a plane that you have to change is a headache. So we are going to continue with our legacy system, but all the transformation is going to be outside our legacy system because the data is going to move outside of our legacy system. And I from innovation, because innovation is our inspiration to continue moving forward. And also with the Stratio, we understand that we have to change our methodology. And we start making, and it wasn't easy, but we create this room inspired in our silly project, introducing our company into agile methodologies to make decisions faster to make decisions involving all parts of the business, not only technology, because technology is a facility. The business knows about business, and technology can help business to solve problems. So with these agile methodologies, all decisions are made with a team, a diverse team, that includes not only our scrum master or our product owners, our legal people, our marketing people, and we are making or we are building the company that we dream, agile, fair, and friendly. So we are now, we feel that we are becoming from a process-centric uh, company into a more customer-centric company. And saying that we want to be a customer-centric, understand our clients, give the solutions for the clients tailor-made, or for our geography tailor-made, is not easy. And for that reason, to be more customer-centric, we understand that yes or yes, we need to be more data-centric. And we need to suffer uh, all the data cycle to clean the data, to use the data, to put algorithms in our data, and start making interconnectivity with external sources, and to be more agile. This is the future, or this is how we want to do it. We are just in this path a year ago, we are learning a lot, and each time we sit with our partners or inside, we still polish each one to be better, because making a decision is not easy. The first time we start, we sit with the Stratio. They don't understand us, and we didn't understand them. And we say, this is going to fail. But at the end, it's not going to fail, because we are building together a dream. We are not matching of what Stratio wants. They are not matching of what we want. We are building together a dream. So we have to dare to, to become a better person when we polish each other with different type of ideas. So in summary, we really accomplish all these five steps without understanding that we have to do it. 
but you have to recommend any SEO what are the steps to start a transformational uh, moment in your organization. You have to follow always all these steps and reinvent and reinvent again and again those steps. And any time you have to jump into the water without knowing the future. In the past, we learned that we have to control almost 80% of our problems. In this new world, you have to control just 20 and deliver with ambiguity. And that 80% is going to change again and again. And you have to allow your leaders, your millennials, your team to, to innovate, to create, to start doing something. The only thing that you have to do in your company is to have one purpose. One purpose that gives you the possibility to dream and to wake up in the morning, making the things better. So at the end, we build this plane and this is a much beautiful plane, and we are going to reinvent the plane any time we have to reinvent the plane. So the, to finalize this conference, I can tell you that we are ready for the next steps, but now we have a cocktail of too many good things. We are not yet blue, AIG used to be blue, now we are pink, but the combination of the experience of the blue with the agility of the pink is a very good combination. We have the right size, we are just 300 employees, $145 million. It's a very good size to transform the company. It's a good size to transform top down. The leaders have to change. And then you can have more information in all your people because if the leaders didn't match with the transformation, it's not easy to move a company with good rhythm. You have to make the diagnosis. We make a big diagnosis, but you have to to, to make the diagnosis and to understand your process again and again. And the, even when for us the change was mandatory, I can tell you everybody, the change is mandatory for everybody and you need to move out of the status quo and ready to transform and transform your companies and the world. And I was here sharing this experience because I am pretty convinced that sharing is one step to make this world much better. And I want this world much better. I want to see growth economies introducing into this artificial intelligence. And I want to tell you that we are trying to build a very successful story and we are happy with our partners. And thank you for being here. Is on, okay, it's mute. It was my fault. Uh, we have some question. Any of you have question? I have many. Can I start first? Yes. <laughs> Why are you here? I'm here because. And don't say me because someone invited me because all of the people that is speaking here are being invited. That's not the answer. I'm what? here because I suffered this story personally. I'm not telling a story that somebody told me. I suffered this story. I know that it's not easy. And I want to share this because if everybody listens to this, maybe it can change something in your minds. Maybe about culture, maybe about people, maybe about the data lake, maybe something. Great. But my inspiration is that something changed, something good. Thank you so much because I love that. Second question. Uh, you have been in uh, different companies and you were a by one and to another one. Uh, the agility, the, the, the decision in the company uh, came because there is a big company or a small company or it depends on the value in the company. What makes the, in a company to have faster decision or slowest decision? The value or the size of the company? The philosophy, yeah, the I philosophy know. of the company. All companies, all people want to innovate, but to really make a decision of the innovate depends on the philosophy of the leaders. Because if leaders allow to innovate and create the environment to innovate and create the environment to, to put some budget and to fail and dare to fail again and again, is the philosophy. Right, last question. Oh, is it there, okay. 
time uh, do you dedicate? Can you repeat since the yes, beginning yes, because yes. The, we cannot hear you. If properly. you could explain a little bit uh, to us how many time you dedicate for the business as usual and for the transformation and how you manage <laughs> the two worlds. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good, a good really good I, question. For sure, my business as usual in this moment means transformation. So but it's a good question because my team is always asking the same. Marta, if I put transformation team, who is going to do the business as usual? And it's a very good question because I don't have budget to have one team making transformation, another team making business as usual. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge that you have to balance, but I think the transformation must be done for people that make business as usual. You have to introduce some other talent, but yes or yes, the owners of the transformation have to be to be the owners of the business. That's great. You have a, a goal to go, and you go for the transformation, and people in your team say, Martha, do that, and they should be in the same train. I love it. Any other question? Should be the last one of today. Three, two, one. one. She will. Big applause <laughs> for Martha. Thank you so much for coming here. It's been an honor, and I have a present for you because you talk in your presentation it's really important to become the best version of ourselves. And I love that because it's in my book and I'm going to give you a book, one of my books as a present. So thank you. Thank you, Marta.